Oh, well, he's very popular, Ed. The sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, dickheads. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. That is why I have got to catch him this time. To show these kids that the example he sets is a first-class ticket to nowhere. Oh, Ed, you sounded like Dirty Harry just then. Really? Uh-huh. Hey, is this Mark? Yeah. Hey, it's Josh. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Um, we are just sort of uh, wrapping up. We're getting into the last few minutes of our A segment with Alan Burdick. Okay. Um, and then we're going to take a quick break and, and bring you right in next and uh, hopefully have you on for about uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Cool. I'll be ready. Awesome. So I will put you in the queue now, and you can just listen in uh, through your phone. Um, you'll hear the break come up. I'm not sure if you actually hear the commercials during the break or not, or silence. Okay. But as soon as we come back from that, um, Colin will introduce you, and we'll go live. All right. Thank you. Cool. All right, and we're back. Um, we're going to talk to Mark Sargent right now, one of the leading voices in the Flat Earth movement. Um, and before we do that, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, we're live here in the afternoon on Thursday. So uh, if you're listening and you have a question, I'm not really interested in like having somebody come on here and really debate about spheroid versus flat with Mark Sargent. I don't think that really would get us very far. But if you have an actual question that you would like to ask, uh, our number is 860-275-7266, 860-275-7266. And if your question is, why are you doing the show uh, at all, I would suggest maybe you could ask that question on the Twitters at WNPR Colin, at WNPR Colin 1L. Okay, so Mark Sargent is joining us right now, as I say, a leading voice in the Flat Earth Movement, creator of the very popular Flat Earth Clues YouTube video series, and the author of Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. Mark Sar Sargent, welcome to our show. Hi, Colin, and thanks so much for having me. And why wouldn't you do this show? Uh, well, why wouldn't we do this show, actually? <laughs> yeah, we, we certainly don't want to be part of any, uh, you know, act of covering up something. Anyway. Of, of course. So, um, of course. So let's imagine that you and I are in an airport at the luggage carousel, and I have my bag. You're still waiting for your bag. It's going to be up, coming up in about a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned to me that you're going to a, a Flat Earth conference where you're one of the key speakers. Right. And I say, what, 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 what are you talking about? And so <laughs> you got about a minute before your bag comes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. How can I do it in 60 seconds? Uh, <laughs> real easy. I am the flat. I am the freshman recruiter for a metaphorical university called Flat Earth. And what that means is that we are not this tiny little rock flying through an impossible universe that could be wiped out at any given time. We are instead inside a planetarium, a terrarium, uh, a Truman Show, if you want to use the 1998 movie, a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and even our best and brightest couldn't figure it out until about 1960, and that would be the United States and the Soviet Union, and when they did, they just decided to keep it a secret. It's not like the humans didn't build this. There was something much bigger than us and much older and much more powerful that built it. But that was basically it, and they tried to keep it a secret up until about 2015, and then it started to break down. Our technology, our detection technology finally kept uh, caught up with everything else, and now we're able to kind of find the breadcrumbs, find the clues. So, so this is a built environment built by some more masterful power than the great human empire yes, uh, that yes. we're familiar with. Yep. Um, although, I mean, in terms of detection equipment, I, I suppose one question people ask you a lot is, mm -hmm. wouldn't just like sailing in one direction for a really long time be a good form of detection equipment? I mean, wouldn't you like hit something eventually? Uh, I would I would turn around, Dom, and say, uh, because most people, if, if you if you take out NASA and all the space agencies, because it's not like uh, we, we didn't think the Earth was a globe before 1972, before the first blue marble picture, most people will say, well, we can see ships go, going over the horizon, right? We all have seen this. You know, boats will go off into the distance, and they're gone. They're gone over the side of the curve, right? They haven't fallen off the edge. They've gone over the side of the curve. And I'd say, yeah, up until about 10 years ago, I'd say you're absolutely right, but we with HD digital zoom, now we can bring, bring these boats back into frame at ranges and distances which are far beyond what the curve should be. If the curvature, and again, I don't want to f spook people with, with math, it's eight inches per mile squared, which is eight inches per mile per mile. So three miles would be three times three is nine times eight is 72 inches, and it gets worse and worse because- Yeah, no. but Mark, well, I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you hit 
I mean, if there's a dome, wouldn't you, like, hit the dome at a certain point? Wouldn't somebody bump into it? Oh, uh, eventually, sure. But the outer marker, so people, the common mistake is the Antarctic coastline is the edge of the Earth. You know, even some flat earthers will fall into that trap from time to time. No, the Antarctic coastline is just the beginning of the edge. And the outer marker, wherever the, 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 the wall is, is probably several thousand miles inland. The United States Navy looked for it for the better part of 30 years, from the 20s all the way to the late 50s. And as far as the upper edge of the dome, that would be anywhere from, I don't know, 500 miles to several thousand miles high. So, and commercial airliners cap out at about 10 miles, spy planes about 20 miles. So the average civilian person isn't going to come nowhere near the outer edge or the upper edge. So there's probably something about this that I'm not getting, but I wouldn't think that the outer edge would be just one place antarctica um it would it's all around you no matter where you go if if you could if you could bypass gps which is a dod system or bypass compasses eventually no matter which direction you traveled if you could travel in a straight line which is a lot tougher than you might think Mm -hmm. uh eventually you're going to run into the outer wall and that is everywhere you go it's going to be antarctica let me. You're obviously a very smart and very articulate uh, spokesman for, for this. Um, what would have been your reaction in 2013 if you met somebody at a luggage carousel? And I think you got involved right around 2014. Do I have uh, that right? Yeah, I started looking to it in 2014. Uh, but yeah, in 2013, so, oh no, I would have laughed you out of the room. I still have friends, uh, conspiracy friends, who who think full well, you know, th- think completely that the entire royal family is made out of lizard people. And you bring up flat Earth to them, and they'll just laugh you. They're going, "Get out of here!" You know, they they just they just wave you off. And it takes a while. In fact, if you don't laugh at flat Earth at first, seriously, I'd think there was something wrong with you. Everybody hates it when they first start, mm-hmm. and that should give some uh, testimony to, to how powerful it is. It's like t- it's what like was telling you. What, was, you your eureka, what go ahead. was your eureka moment? What was your like? Okay, so you went from a guy who would maybe laugh at me at the luggage carousel if I started telling you about this. Right? Did you have kind of a eureka moment? Where like, yeah, Whoa, yeah, I, I did. Uh, it was the very beginning of 2015, and I woke up. I had this Jerry Maguire moment at like 3:30 in the morning on on February 10th. But the the big eureka moment for me was the United States Navy, which was Admiral Byrd. He went on television. It's great. Uh, we were lucky to get the footage. Uh, on the CBS affiliate, there was a show called The Long Jeans Chronoscope. And he goes on and, and says that, oh, yeah, Antarctica is made out of money, and we're going to carve this thing up like a turkey. It's going to be, you know, it's made. Of, there's a mountain range made out of coal, uranium, and oil, and minerals. And then all of a sudden, the, his very next mission, that's all canceled. And everybody gets off the ice at the same time, and they form the Antarctic Treaty. And no corporation is allowed to go down to Antarctica ever, in the, forever. It's not even up for debate until the year 2041. And all nations signed on to it. It goes against everything that we are as a civilization. Capitalism, greed, money, power, rule the day. So your Jerry Maguire moment was, you had me at Antarctica. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, that's good. I like that. I'm, gonna, I'm, still, <laughs> right, I'm we, totally stealing that line. All right. Uh, we have, go ahead. People do that all the time. Uh, here's uh, Matt in West Harvard. Hi, Matt. You're on the air. Uh, hi there. Um, got a hypothetical question for you. Um, mm-hmm. Let's say you had say, uh, another eureka moment and thought, um, oh, maybe the Earth actually is round. Of course. Um, it's true, right, you feel about yeah. All the I, YouTube videos you put out um, making this argument and such, um, and it, the way that it might have affected other people um, who don't have the ability to, you know, sort of reason and and bounce back from, uh, sure. I don't know. Matt, no, 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 no. Into a yeah, point Matt, like that. Although, Matt, could I just get you to amplify one of the things uh, I'm understanding from the call screener? You actually lived with somebody who subscribed to some of these beliefs, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. If okay. if if um, I they, they, they watched a number of YouTube videos. I don't know if it was actually this one in particular. Um, this uh, all right. Yeah, I, I get his, but... I get his question. I get his question, yeah, which sure. is if I found out that the Earth was. And by the way, we don't use the word round because you know a dinner plate is round. Right. Your dining room table yeah. is probably round. Sphere, ball, globe, three dimensional. Round can also be two dimensional, three dimensional. But if I found out that the Earth was a ball, sphere, globe. I uh, would what would I do I'd tear it all down I, I would tear it down I've said that since the beginning in fact that's why I made the clues in the first place it was more of this cry cry for help that I put on the internet I said okay internet hive mind I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore tell me how I'm wrong uh, if I am proven wrong it, absolutely I'll rip it all down uh, it, and I've said that since day one I would be happy to 
and we're three plus years into this and it just keeps getting bigger and weirder and stranger but but it's a good question and i absolutely would turn so, down so mark uh typically mm -hmm. uh, um two different kinds of presbyterians can get in much worse arguments <laughs> than a presbyterian and a methodist can so okay. does that happen in the flat earth movement are there people do you are people who get in bigger fights about ways in which it's flat as opposed oh. to the arguments oh. one might get into yeah. yeah absolutely in fact i use the um, monty python life of brian as a reference point in that regards, which is, uh, everyone remembers Life of Brian when Brian drops his shoe and people are looking at the meaning of the shoe. And it's so brilliantly written how it's like you can see the forming of all these different religions just based off of the dropping of the shoe. Flat Earth creates so much enthusiasm to people that, we, oh yeah, there's definitely uh, some infighting. Uh, like 70% of the Flat Earth community, and it's a rough round number, believe in a domed structure like the Truman Show. And then, but 30% of them believe that there there is no dome it's flat but it's this infinite plane and then you have a whole bunch of different flavors in between that it's it's like the scottish highlands with all these different flags the only thing we can agree on is at the end of the day we uh, the other the enemy on the other side of the field is the globe so you know is it yeah, go back to even what matt was asking you about mm -hmm. and for me as i look at certain kinds of beliefs that that don't conform with my belief, I can sort of see maybe the harm in them or why people would live differently as a result. In other words, if you don't believe the vaccines uh, are efficacious, you think they might even be dangerous, you don't get vaccinated, maybe measles comes back, whatever. I sure. mean, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Yeah. But I don't even know, like, do you li live different? I mean, obviously, this is a little bit your career these days. Right. But, I mean, other than that, let's say you it weren't. Let's say you were just one of the Mark Sargent fans out there who... who, who uh, watch your videos and, right. and agree with you. Do you live any differently as a result of thinking that this is not a spheroid? Yeah, yeah. You know, one out of every 10 people that, that email me or call me or, or whatever, they will ask that. It's like, you know, what does it matter? It, what does it matter whether the earth is flat or round? You know, I'm still going to go to my crappy job in the morning and my wife doesn't listen to me and my kids are terrible and all this other stuff. My life's not going to change. And I say, well, that's only because you, you haven't really gotten into it yet. It doesn't matter until you believe it. It's kind of like um, having somebody tell you you were adopted. You're not, you know, you're going to go through that denial thing for, you know, when you're like 30 and somebody tells you you're adopted, you're going to go in denial, denial, and then all of a sudden, if they have enough stuff on you, they, you start revisiting everything from your childhood, all these different memories. When you get into Flat Earth, the, the biggest thing uh, is mostly, it's, it's mostly spirituality, which is do you still, if, if there is a higher power, if this place was built, and that's really what Flat Earth screams out is this was, was built, that means there is some sort of creator. I'm not, gonna, I'm not arrogant enough to say which god it is. But uh, if that is the case, then you've got some sort of parental figure looking over the top of their newspaper at you. Do you still do the same things you do now? Do you still do malicious things against people? Do you still go to war, hate crimes, sex crimes, sex crimes that sort of thing? I don't. I, I'll never do a malicious thing to anyone else ever again. So, although, let's just stay with this for a moment, because, I mean, there are some other possibilities. One of them might be that this uh, we're living in a structure built by some other civilization. Oh, sure, sure, in, sure, in sure. But, again, but there's what, even a whole school of philosophy. I think it's Nick Ostrom, uh, is the leader of this whole philosophy, that we have. it would be difficult to know if you were living in, in a hologramic environment. In other words, if we were basically in the Star Trek hologram. Oh, yeah, it'd be almost would impossible. Would even necessarily know yeah. it? So, so it, it isn't necessarily... Gods and angels, is it? I mean, it could no, be, no. But it, but then you're kind of splitting hairs, which is you know one man's advanced civilization is another man's deity. So it's like, I mean, what, either way, whether it, what, I, there's not there's a bunch of different quotes I could use. But if a giant golden spaceship, let's say, landed somewhere near Boston, uh, and you know some wonderfully beautiful blue aliens came out, uh, there would be a lot of people that would worship them as deities, and other people that would say, oh, they do look like Avatar. So mm -hmm. you get this weird mix. But either way, I mean, it kind of has the same effect. So let's. Talk about the dome idea a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we have a call coming in from Matt and Avon, but I'll, maybe I can just sort of summarize uh, okay. his question. Apparently everybody who calls up today is going to be named Matt. But, um, <laughs> the, um, his, I think, question is, like, how, I don't know, how would you establish the existence of the dome? I mean, what makes you think there's a dome as opposed to these other people you talked about who just think it's an infinite plane with a sky? Sure. Um, the two, two reasons. One is that a dome would... Um, establish a, a pressurized system, meaning that uh, pressure, like air pressure that we're in now, right, uh, 
air pr pressure cannot exist without some sort of container. I don't care if it's a basketball or a volleyball or a soccer ball or a can of hairspray or, 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 or spray paint. Pressure needs a container. And yet the Earth is one of the only two objects I've ever seen that doesn't apply. This doesn't apply to meaning you, you've got great. They say, well, gravity's holding all the, the air pressure down. OK, where does where is the bleeding edge between our atmosphere and the endless expanse of the vacuum of space. I've talked to several uh, vacuum you know, engineers, then they say there is no way. The power of the vacuum is no joke. Uh, the atmosphere of this world should be just torn off instantly with with easily and that doesn't happen that'd be the first thing as far as the dome goes and then maybe a circumstantial thing would be why the united states and the soviet union were firing atomic weapons straight up for four years from uh the late i'm sorry the late 1950s until the early 1960s firing nothing that's all the program they did the operation fishbowl and uh, that was that was the american program the russians don't name theirs as creatively as ours and they were firing straight up and i knew exactly what they were doing when i was like oh yeah they were going to map first they tried to punch through it and then they were trying to map the sky because their early shots were the were the early megatons couldn't break through so uh, when i hear all that mm -hmm. it makes me nervous because I mean, I guess you don't. You wouldn't use the term of global warming. What would that uh, be? Oh, you mean? Yeah. But, but but here we are with this dome, right. and we've got people firing nukes in the air. Well, I mean, there you know, and and pollution is going up there with no place to go, right. and uh, it just seems like. I mean, are there is it, are there vents? Does anybody come and clean up or turn down the thermostat? Or I mean, how does that all work? That's an excellent question because it's actually surprising to me how many people have asked you. Do you believe in climate change? And I said, oh, yeah, absolutely, I believe in climate change. In fact, an enclosed, if you were in a building, and anyone that's gone to a sports stadium after a, a pyrotechnic show knows this, it's like that smoke hangs around for a while, even with the vents in the sports stadium. Uh, it, they, it hangs around. Do I think we, we have uh, this, as far as this thing being mechanical, are there automated processes like the jet stream and the underwater conveyor system and the magma system? Uh, they, all, they all play a part. Uh, but I think the human condition has really done some not necessarily damage but it is affecting this and and there's a reason why we have wild weather and if they don't want to call it global warming anymore they want to call it climate change that's fine but everybody knows there's something weird happening i mean look i three weeks ago i was getting a tan up here in seattle in november how, how does that happen 20 years ago i would have died of exposure and now i'm getting a tan i've never seen this before so this is, a, this is a built environment we need to take better care of. Uh, yes, of course, it's a built environment. In fact, <laughs> the, the environmentalists should be happy about this because it's like, oh, yeah, if it is a building, we absolutely should be. The automated processes can only do so much. You know, you mm. put 7 billion people and, you know, the internal combustion engines, every car is just this tiny little furnace. Uh, you know, and billions of those things are running every single day. Of course, the system is going to have to compensate in some way. So uh, this question is another one that really doesn't necessarily apply to you, although I, I guess it kind of could, could. But, I mean, you're kind of now a leader and a spokesperson within this movement. Right. You're really good at it, too. You're a really good radio guest. I mean, you're just made to have this kind of interview. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and, but I mean, let's, let's, what, let's, again, let's pick the guy who, or, or woman who's watching your videos and, and also getting pretty excited about this idea. Yeah. Isn't there a tremendous disincentive to never talk about it to anybody? In other words, if I thought what you think... I don't think I'd tell anybody because there must be a pretty major social cost. Oh, oh to, yes, there yeah. is. In fact, there was something that I talked about when I first built the clues. It is just off the top of my head, which was uh, the Fight Club reference from the 1999 movie Fight Club, which is the first rule of Flat Club is that you do not talk about Flat Club. You just don't. Um, and it's and it's so true. I mean, anyone's listening out there. And again, I know people get charged up. But look, your family, your friends, your colleagues. Oh, you, you think they're on your side? No, no. You, you basically, basically what I'm saying is, yeah, anyone that's out there, you have to kind of know your audience, which is you, you talk to them, you kind of sat, you know, go, come at them sideways and say, you know, what do you think about the moon landing? And if they're like, oh yeah, rah, rah, we went to the moon, Apollo, wave the flag, that type of thing, then yeah, you probably shouldn't bring up flat earth. It's a delicate deal. I've seen, I've seen marriages break up. I've seen families, you know, try to commit their children uh it is it is extremely polarizing extremely and so yeah it's you have to come at it delicately i mean not to pry into your life but is there anybody in your life anybody you're close to who going, going, going oh, no 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 mark you're so smart you're, you're so good at so many different things right. 
don't do this. Do you have like, I <laughs> oh, know. yeah. Yeah, uh, I have. I, there's so uh, two of my cousins, they're twin girls uh, about my age. And one, one of them is, you know, she tolerates it. And she's like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. And the other one, again, twin. Other one, like her first email to me, she says, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, and she won't talk. She hasn't talked to me in like eight months because of this mm -hmm. and uh but then again you know i've got cousins that are on board but they're still in the closet because they don't yeah. you know because they're they're their work and then i've got other people other family members that are on you know like my my mother's into it uh my sister your mom's okay with this i didn't i didn't know if your mom's alive or anything i didn't know oh, yeah. but like like my mother never was particularly happy with a lot of the stuff that i <laughs> believe but, um you know it was more kind of more political but but so your mom's like that's my son the flat earth guy yep. i'm so proud of him yep she's got a t-shirt that <laughs> says i'm the mother of the father of flat earth which is weird because i did not say that i was the father of flat earth but no. she but then again she's one of those mothers that if uh that she would be she would she would help me hide the bodies one of those it's like <laughs> it's like no poor gasoline out there it'll throw off the scent of the dogs it'll be fine don't don't say that that sounds very x-files sorry <laughs> so, mark Sargent, it's so great to talk to you yeah. and i do uh if people who want to know more about this or get another taste of uh, you're thinking about this there are the earth clues youtube video yep. series and the book flat earth clues the sky's the limit yep. thanks for being with us Th man. thank you oh, thank you thank you very much for having me okay bye -bye. bye bye i just did a kai rizdal i'm sorry about that i called it man uh, okay <laughs> we'll take a break i am not kai rizdal at least that's my <laughs> that's my opinion uh and we'll come back the ball and let us hi mark thanks for joining us today oh th thank you very much it was my pleasure you're welcome. Right. Ours too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.